One of Britain's best-loved cars was consigned to history today. After 41 years of continuous production and nearly 140 different models, the last classic Mini rolled off the production line at Longbridge. Our industry correspondent, Stephen Evans, was there this evening. Anna, this is where it all started, August the 26th, 1959, the very first Mini. And this is where it all ended, October the 4th, the year 2000, a few hours ago, the very last Mini. Talk of flying the flag. The last Mini, number 5,387,862, came off the line to the recorded chant of England football supporters. Driven today by Lulu, a 60s icon driving a 60s icon. The first Mini came off the production line 41 years ago. We used to squash in them. Uh, they were easy to zoom around in. Um, it's about, they were fun. About a lot of fun. It wasn't serious, it was fun, you know. Alex Grisigoni, the brilliant designer, faced the task of producing a car with a better ratio of interior space to overall dimensions. The brilliant idea was to put the engine sideways, giving more space in a short car. A very small car for the housewife, which is economical to run, and has lots of, um, uh, lots of um, shopping space inside, and uh, therefore it doesn't need a big boot. If perhaps not modern shoppers, the late Alec Isigonis' idea served rally drivers well. Paddy Hopkirk at Longbridge today won the 1964 Monte Carlo Rally. Well, it was just so far ahead of its time. It was so unique. It became a cult car. Uh, you went to a stately home, and there was a Rolls Royce parked there. On one side, and on the other side was the Mini, and nobody sort of thought it was sort of the servant's car. It was just part of the family. So, Anna, this particular part of the family will go to a museum, the very last one, but the ones before that apparently will be auctioned on the internet, and apparently there will be big interest in Japan particularly. So, the uh, cars before this one, the, the nearly last Minis, if you like, may well go for tens of thousands of pounds. Stephen, thank you very much. Finally, a great British classic reached the end of the road today. The last ever classic mini car rolled off the production line at the Rover plant in Longbridge after 41 years. Chris Choi reports on the end of an era. With razzmatazz and vehicle 5,387,862, Mini's number is finally up. As the last car rolled out of Longbridge this morning, tributes poured in. The Japanese bought it like hell. They, a lot of um, uh, stars bought them. I mean, the Beatles had one, Peter Sellers had one, the royal family had one. A, a, in Paris, it became the chic car to sort of pick your girlfriend up in. It's the kind of treatment normally reserved for celebrities, but then the Mini has always been a megastar. This is the final one, and when they built it, they were also making history. They closed an era of motoring opened in 1959. Sir Alec Isigonis created a car to take a family of four with luggage, yet it truly was a Mini, just 10 feet long. And with films like The Italian Job, it captured first attention, then affection. Its sheer economy and compact styling have never really become outdated. Chosen for the final drive today, a star whose fame doesn't stretch quite as far back as British motoring's greatest hit. Lulu, why do you think everybody loves the Mini? Well, maybe it reminds a lot of us of the 60s, and the 60s were all about fun, let's face it. You know, and there's not enough fun in our lives, I don't think. The Mini isn't entirely extinct. At 41, it's had a facelift and is now part of BMW. Across Britain, thousands of enthusiasts think there's more mileage in the old model. I'm just so sad it's going. I bet there's nothing one can do about but it. But ours is not. Ours is staying as is. As the last Mini leaves the factory, this could be just the start of increased cult status for what remains perhaps the world's favourite car. Chris Choi, ITN, Longbridge.